He's on the boost, on the boost, on the boost. Nothing, nothing, I'm looking at it. Oh, I'm an idiot, he peaked on the boost. Fuck. Do you think it's one of them? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to see. You think so? I'm going to touch it. I'm going to make One vent. Two vent. Vent, vent, vent. Before let's go. There's fun. If we're looking into the past to kind of see where we are right now, you can see that there's a lot of kind of unresolved, you know, and undisclosed uh, issues that the community doesn't know about that we've had to go through. But let's start by looking back towards Dreamhack Open. Oh, look. Yours is detached? My flotation device, yeah. <laughs> my flotation device is already detached. You're gonna have to float to Europe, dude. Oh my god. I'm wearing two hoodies, man. Yes. How are you back there? I'm good so far. this guy starts sweating too much, I might join you back there. Yeah, you should probably. <laughs> the cool seats. I'm putting the slightest bit of pressure to like, you know, relax in the damn thing. It's just like... <laughs> you know, I'm this is... Jacob and Alex. Yes, please do. I can show you the world. I can show you the world. Tell me, princess, now when did you last let your heart decide? You got two different angles. <laughs> okay. Todd, you're gonna drop them. Good to see you. The original roster contained a seasoned veteran in Devil Walk as well as a massive upcoming talent in Pith. One thing that we didn't foresee was Dev Walk and Pitt leaving the team and not coming over to the United States. So for us, you know, going into the last season of ESEA, we had really high hopes, um, pretty high confidence, but the issue that we ran into was that when we had left for DreamHack, we hadn't anticipated, you know, Swedes wanting to stay in Sweden for as long as they did. It was just kind of a, an avalanche of misfortune happening all at once. That's when I came to, to Lex and I'm like, I don't know what we should do. You know, I, I don't know what to do. Anger, Lex and I were, were already moved to Chicago. We were already setting up at the Steel Series office and suddenly we just had two of the core pieces of our team ripped away from us. And we were left with these huge voids that we needed to fill like immediately. We felt like we were at the risk of losing everything. You, you can't have a CSGO team with three players. We ended up getting Flo Sick and Derek to agree to come out and honestly that was a godsend. Um, if they hadn't decided to join, you know, like I don't know what we would have done. It's not just one person and it's not just two people. Everybody has something that they do that makes somebody else on the team angry or frustrated or depressed, you know, it's it's just part of being on a team. Not everybody's going to gel perfectly, and right now everybody just has low patience. We're so worn down, everybody is, from, from all the pressure, and you know, things were bound to come to a boiling point. Um, it's just natural. Um, we are preparing right now for Katowice. I have a lot of scrims booked pretty much every night this week. Um, spending a lot of time going over tactics and making sure everyone's on the same page. Uh, right now we're just trying to grind out scrims. I mean, a lot of what we're doing is, I mean, prep work isn't exactly the most fun or, um, I don't know how to put it, maybe enjoyable time. Uh, that we'd like to be spending. Uh, I'm sure a lot of us would like to be sleeping in right now, but we are on our way. I'm in the boost. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh, I'm an idiot. He peaked on the boost. Fuck. You think it's one of them? You're right? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to see. You think so? I don't know. Touch it. I'm gonna make it. Alright. And 
Like one vent, two vent. Wait, wait, wait. Oh! Whoa! Man, you're so good. Before, let's go. Just fine. Fuck! Where are you, man? IEM Katowice qualifiers. We lost on cash to, I believe, what was a main team in a horrendous match, I think, both individually and, and team wise across the board. And, you know, just looking at the scoreline and, and thinking about the context of that match, it was something that needed to happen for us. What is kind of strange is that uh, outside of game, man, we, got, we really know how to chum it up. We're all good friends. Like, all five of us are really good friends. Um, and we get along fabulously. Like, really well. But in game, it's it's like this switch gets flipped, and it's almost as if we're a whole different a whole different team. We had two options for the upcoming weekend. There was a DreamHack uh, closed qualifier where all of the top teams in North America were going to be competing. You know, all the teams that had been just beating us up and down for a couple weeks. And then there was a local Chicago land, the Mad City land, that was going to be run by a couple Steel Series members that we had been um, asked to participate in a few weeks earlier. And you know, like you can look at it as us wanting to go beat up on lower, lower skilled people or like dodge a qualifier or something like that. But honestly, it was just an opportunity for us to regain our footing and regain a little bit of confidence. So. When the guys said, you know, they'd rather go and play the local land and, and take it easy for a weekend, I totally understood. And I couldn't fault them for that. And I wasn't going to push them into playing this other qualifier when they could earn a little bit of cash and have some fun this weekend instead. This gaming, you know, world that we live in kind of puts those pressures on us as much as we do ourselves. And I think going to this land at Mad City was kind of the... Uh, point in which you can step back for a second and realize where we all came from and that's you know we were all at one point you know nobodies we were no one and we all worked hard to get somewhere and so you know part of the reason that we wanted to go is, is just to kind of take a step back from all the serious matches that we must win we must win we have to win this or else and go have some fun like realize why we all do this and why Competing is our passion and why we love to do what we do and you know, there's no way, better way to do that than, than to check in with your roots. Everyone might tag him again. Everyone yeah, photos. Please, no photos. Please, no photos, please. Stay to that weapon is pretty sick with it. And Desi, don't let him do it to you. Lines up the first headshot in the second. Desi, don't do it to Desi. you. Oh, man. A Desi Eagle. Oh, and the third. That's Mad Cow. Now next is potentially SP2. He's across the board. And Winter Fox extremely aggressive. Now, what is that? Do you see that? I'm going to need a hell of a performance out of XP3. He's now worried about the flank. But by worrying about the flank, he does leave Lex all alone. So can the old school legend do it? There's already an op posted up on him and then the shot. Looking for the repeat. A little dangerous there. That's gonna force Sezzy to get off the bomb. Don't give this man a chance. And now he just needs to take down Sezzy. This is huge from wow. XP3. And he completes the quad. Sick headshot. He must be drinking that dark matter. Dark matter. They gotta prove their dominance. No, don't take it away from him. Slow sick. What is slow sick? Wait a minute. That's something that I think North American CS lacks is kind of a sense of community in the local gaming scene. You know, lo young talent never gets to go to these lands, never gets to meet professional teams, never gets to, gets to compete against, you know, guys like us that get to go compete internationally. I think there's, you know, a responsibility for us as professional players to take them seriously and, and realize that when we were growing up, we had these lands all the time and we got to go and compete. And they've been all but dead up until recently. I mean, you've got Fragadelphia on the East Coast, you've got some of the local lands up and down Southern California that, you know, happen. But the Midwest doesn't really have much. 
but now they've got Mad City Land, and we wanted to be there to support that. So we win the Mad City Land, come home, pocket full of money, good spirits, all had a good time, and I think a lot of fun. You know, a lot of us were feeling pretty good coming back, so it's like, wow, you know what, like, one, not everything that we do needs to be taken so serious to the point where, you know, like, either A, you need roster changes if it doesn't work, or B, we all need to, you know, hate each other or get mad at each other over stuff and, you know, see. I think it was just a great weekend to have me spent together with your team and, you know, come back fresh. We came back and I think it was that Monday right afterwards where we had a best of three for SIVO uh, against NRG. And that best of three was kind of the almost the breaking point but definitely a reality check for all of us where it was like hey not everything here is working How, what can we do to fix it both dropping into the site but they're already all over this place a couple of smokes down just one smoke keeping gobby on the wrong side bomb should be planted with no problem look at gobby taking a 1v2 fire fight he's gonna go down very quickly and now the retake underway yeah, they're kind of separated though, they're trying to do this retake, and Winter Fox deals with it very, very well. So just a quick inner rush where Desi and Anger, kind of the two guys we were talking about that need to play well for Winter Fox to have a good chance tonight. It's been bad, is what I'm trying to say for energy. Now, Winter Fox charging in with the rifle advantage. Justin, though, playing inside the smoke. Gets right behind, goes for the flank, CZ75, what's this? Gets one kill, should've got the second one. I don't know what I'm seeing. Low sick makes the trade, but at this point, the strat is completely screwed. They charge it in sight, drop the bomb, and it's gonna be a 2v3 retake. Lex pushes way up, and he's hoping to play some sort of off angle. Trying to catch Justin off guard here. Shadow nice flash comes in as well to help Lex out. That's a big shot to hit. Alright, good. I didn't think that kill was gonna come through for Lex, so it's gonna drop us into a 1v1. All plus it has to stay alive. And now you can't confuse. Good night, Joe. Yep. That's it. That's gonna be the round winner here, and Tot will save this in four. Justin opens it up, but it's gonna be a one-to-one -one trade. XP3, though, nobody's expecting him right there. Drops the player at the pop dog ladder room. As well. He taps the bomb just waiting to see if there's no push out. Justin, not gonna buy it. He calls Desi's bluff, but Desi's not bluffing this time. He's sticking it, he's gonna get it. That's going to be now 14 to 11. Justin can't even land the frag. Pezzi instead looking for the post plant kill and he'll get it. Gobby's out to e box. Taking that position. More map control. Lex still playing with the smoke. Picks up one. A lot of damage. The Peter drops it down to 15 to 40. Tough tail and uh, runs the heck out of there. Oh. Yeah, surprise. Silent peeking in through Ivy. Somehow Lex takes that kill. No idea how that works, but oh, there my. you go. A lot of missed shots that round. Unfortunately, that's around they couldn't afford to lose. So it will be Winter Fox taking that one. We're back. Map number two. Uh, the first one was for Strain. 16 at 11. Winter Fox taking that, interestingly enough. Uh, so they're on map pick. Never saw it before from Winter Fox, at least not late. I thought we'd be yeah. watching the cat as well. And Dez is going to come charging on off. Yep, surprise, got me shut down. Now Peter can run all alone. Sees Desi, and uh, it's actually XP3 who goes ahead and finishes off that kill. That's a 3k round for XP3. A nice hold from Winter Fox, and they might even lose a single member here. As soon as I said that, Peter does pick up an out frag, but now in a 1v4, this one should be done soon. Yeah, I think they can just see the barrel of his gun right there. A little clustered, misses one shot, and tries to back off, going for the save. Flex right there with the jumping the Moss shot. One's at firebox. Grenade's gonna be. Lex down. He realizes that the problem is going to run out. Gabi gets tagged just a little bit, though. And now all the players are just, like, isolated on one side. There's a flying silence in the sandwich. Going to put XB3 on the free spot. 
tough situation. 1v3. Ends up taking the firefight. There's a few turns around. Spots him, but he's gonna get dropped so now. It's a very tough situation. The AWG needs to pick up a kill. Peter working his way up. Off shot's going to fail. Silent takes the kill. Peter with the DQ. Cool. Um, what do I do? Like, you literally, like, slam the opposite of what I'm saying. I'm saying we need to go faster. That doesn't mean we need to do a strat fast, which is sticking on fast, which is, I can agree, but our default needs to be done faster. That's all I want to say to you. I don't, I don't care. Like, all I was saying is it wasn't working. It didn't we work did because our default was run too slow. slow. Our default was run too slow. We didn't even get to do it properly yet. Like, you just walked out mid and said nothing. So, like, that, does, that doesn't clear. matter. You can still make, wasn't just we, like can like still, we can still do the strat. self-sabotage to the highest degree. And we ended up losing Mirage 16-14, but that map was ours up and down. We had no business losing it, but we found a way. Damn it, we found a way, and it was spectacular to watch because it was the most disheartening thing you could possibly see when you just know that you and your team are down mentally and emotionally out of it and just not there and you're still winning the game it's like why can we not just win this and we got destroyed on dust too it was a massacre off the buy some time and super close to the smoke turned into a 2k lots of cash, tech nine for even nine also oh, man absolutely That's... shut down is winter fox there they just try to be yet again they do get a pick from tunnels this time but oh, oh my you gotta it. get that i don't even understand now justin gets another oh, this is insane like how does justin survive and get those two kills that is just unforgivable and it's rounds like that and situations piling up like that that have really put winter fox in the dumps this game He's all alone. Problem is Justin spotted him out, so he knows what the position is. Drops the smoke. Now the flashes. Anchor to line. Nothing you can do. Sprays at the floor. And that is perhaps an unexciting end to... And we finished that match and stepped away and spent the next two days talking about how we can fix it. And not a lot of solutions seemed really feasible. But one thing that we talked about that I think ultimately is going to be something that solves a lot of issues in this team is having an in-house coach. And so we brought in uh, Mike, who actually works at Steel Series, former pro player Paradox. Hi, my name is Mike Paradox Stanowski. I'm an XCS pro and the new head coach of Winter Fox. Every round to even give themselves a chance. Rattlesnake getting the open kill on War Machine. But Paradox with the sniper rifle coming back and answering with two. Will Zoo making his way into the shot. Paradox with the third. When Brian first approached me to potentially coach Winter Fox, um, right away I felt, and just being around day to day, that there's a tension and tension can be positive or negative, right? And tension on part of the players and the organization, right? Tension comes from expectations, and Brian and I talked a lot about what the expectations are, what they should be, and also how to handle that tension. Our first team meeting um, with the guys and, and myself, well, it, it was really a, an org meeting with everybody involved. Um, the, the first thing I told everyone is everybody in the room is responsible for doing their job, and they're part of being the best, right? It, it's not the five guys that are playing in the server at the time. It, it's everybody that's contributing up to that, right? And you have to be mindful of every person in that room and the sacrifices that they're making to be here and to help the team be the best team that they could be. And each and every person in the room said, I want to get to major. That's our goal. Let's get to major and try to win it, right? So even though there is tension and there are arguments day to day, at the end of the day, you know the guy sitting next to you, to your left, to your right, all across the room, throughout the whole organization, the team, the organization is to get to that major. So let's all come together and understand that our goals are the same, right? And refocus ourselves into achieving that goal.
So now that we're getting that down, our practice is going to follow, our results are going to follow, and, and we're changing the way we do things quite a bit where we may have to make some sacrifices, right? Some additional sacrifices, but we've all decided together that we're willing to make that from, from Brian to myself to the entire organization and the entire team and we will achieve what we set out to achieve. For me, ultimately, I'm, I'm guardedly optimistic in that we're just still going to have problems. Like, this isn't, you know, all roses. It's not all going to smell pretty. But I tell you what, like, our shit, the stuff that comes out of, you know, the room over there that we play from, some time, some place, somehow, some way, we are going to make it work. And I think I'm confident in saying that now because after everything, I have four guys that I can call my teammates that are willing to work. And when you have that, you've got something. It may not be the next Fanatic overnight, but if you have four guys by your side that are willing to do anything, do anything to win. You got a real shot. You have to be willing to accept the difficult ones and allow them to help you grow both as an individual as a, and as a team. And if you can harness that energy, right, and harness and create something positive out, out of it and grow, then you'll build something spectacular and so it's only a matter of time. Hey everyone, thank you for taking the time to watch this episode of Pride. If you liked what you saw, if you want to see more, go ahead and press the subscribe button down below. If you learned something new or maybe you just developed a man crush on Lex after this episode, make sure to hit the like button as well. Big shout outs to SteelSeries and CyberPower PC for all their continued support. Extra special thanks to some of the musical artists that let us use their songs in this episode. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.